Hello there. Hi, I'm Uncommon, and joining me today, the lovely, <laughs> the beautiful, the also me, and this troll named Tom. <laughs> ah, you could have had the beautiful <laughs> intro, but you you didn't get it. No, I was waiting for your uncommonly happy to see you line. And then I was going to shoot you a glare. Um, but um, that didn't happen. Up, so. I'm uncommonly tricky. And I was waiting for you <laughs> to call me out. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching uh, Delvin in Deep, episode 17, which isn't the continuation of Tiffany's Diner, like previously promised. We have got something better for you. <laughs> I've our, told our... everybody there are spoilers for this episode, so they're not watching. Oh, really? I don't know if they would have been able to watch or not. Anyway, but there's no spoilers today. Let me change my title to uh, no spoilers. Who, who uh, knows? Maybe maybe they... they uh, what not one of the players... Doesn't he watch? Yeah, yeah. Shoot, and, shoot, him, shoot him a text message. We need our viewer back. We, <laughs> I'll do it right now. Ready? Ready? Connor, we need our viewer back. No spoilers today, mate. Because I'm Australian for that one line. Mm. That's that's what. Um, We're a little is criminal ill on the inside. I mean, Australian. Yeah, man. Have so have you have you seen? Because uh, you you're you're so wanting the the banter. Have you seen yeah. casually explained play StarCraft? Um, I've seen that that's becoming a thing, and I didn't know who Casually Explained was, other than a few of his Casually Explained videos. Oh, okay. Because okay, so it's yeah. just, it, well, no, I mean, he's just, in, he's pretty good at StarCraft. Okay. Um, but it's just so funny, because, like, to me, that voice is only his Casually Explained show. So, like, to hear him talk about StarCraft is, like, the weirdest thing. Because I'm like, that voice does not belong there. This is not, this is not how we do things. I'm not used ah. to this. Um, so, you know, we, 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 want, we don't have to struggle for, for things to talk about because I have, I have a tragedy today. <laughs> um, and it was, it was preceded by some irresponsibility. Because <laughs> I, being myself, um, have been putting off getting a virtual reality headset for, for a couple years. I've been waiting for something better and bigger. Um... Hey, Gabe Jockey, you called with your siren tones. Uh, oh, I'm a siren. That. That, that's an attractive person. <laughs> uh, uh. Hey, man. We were just, I'm just telling the, um, I'm just starting my, my story about virtual reality headset. And I, I could have bought maybe a reasonable consumer level HTC Vive for $500. Um, I could have bought uh, the newer headset, the Pro, but had got the kit that had the the you know one point version of all the the little sensors, and that would have only been a thousand dollars. But no, I wouldn't settle. Um, I I spent not only did I spend fifteen hundred dollars after taxes on a virtual reality headset, I I go away to Kentucky in like six weeks. So, <laughs> Brandy's one of the first things Brandy asked me was, um, "Are you gonna leave that here, right? Because I want to play Skyrim." I was like, "Fuck, <laughs> probably, probably gonna leave that here," even though I think it'll work on my laptop. Um, but the, the saga's not over. You're thinking, uh, "Where's the virtual reality headset?" Did, right, Tom? That's exactly the question you asked me. Well, hey, 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 uncommon. Where is the virtual virtual reality headset? I don't see it. I, I took I took a large portion of today off of work. That I worked at home. I did. I was actually surprisingly productive for being at home in front of my video games. Um, to sit down and, and wait for for the virtual reality headset to show up. And after about an hour, I decided to pull up the tracking number to find out that it had... I got home at 10.30, by the way. 10.30 a.m. It The attempted delivery was 10.20 a.m. They had already... They had rushed to my house for some reason. Never before have they made it here before noon. They rushed to my house today to deliver the box and then took it away from me. I I could have I could have done all my work stuff in virtual reality today. But they didn't want that to happen. 
that's not what I got. So right after the show ends, I'm running right to the, the post office. I'm going to pick it up. And I'm going to come back. I'm going to spend approximately two hours setting it up because I hear it's, I hear it's a bitch. I got <laughs> I got the and then you're going to go to bed right after you set it up. Then I'm going to get no sleep tonight as I delve into Skyrim. I might even stream it. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. Um, and I'll buy it and play like five games and never touch it again. Uh, but if you look behind me, I've cleared out the space already. I mean, there's a beanbag here now, but that, that's movable. I've cleared out the space. Brandy's got to have a place to like sit when she comes in here. Um... It, it's a it's a play area, so we'll see. We'll see. Oh man! Mm. Yeah, what, what, what's that? K- Casey's gonna get a flat tire on the way there, and then he's not gonna be able to get there until after it closes. Until tomorrow morning, no. First world problems, <laughs> right? Your your fucking VR headset didn't show up when you wanted it to. <laughs> the luxury of, of being able to take like you know six hours off of work to wait for it, and then it doesn't show up. First world problems. And then you'll give it to your good friend Connor after you've given up on it, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, I know. I know. Actually, that even if I actually, don't, well, go ahead. Well, 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 we're gonna have a giveaway at the end of the stream. It's actually for the viewers. Um, so just type in VR headset into the chat to enter yourself into uh, into the contest. Um. <laughs> Where the end result is Connor getting a, a headset for a <laughs> VR headset. It's always like the one person who hangs out my stream. All right, we're going to have a giveaway. Um, <laughs> one viewer. Uh, so we don't even need to type anything. We're just going to go ahead and roll the randomizer. Sorry, we're not, not going to do We're not going <laughs> to VR headset. We're not going to do a giveaway. We're just going to do a handout here. You, you, could, you could come over and play the VR headset. Um, if you happen to live in the local area, and I know you in person. Uh, that's only apply in person. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what actually happens. Uh, there's all, all kinds of other cool things on the horizon. Um, Tech 4 finally getting his graphics card, and he might be diving into role-playing GTA. A, oh, right. Cause he, good. Well, no, yeah, because he has got his approved application, so that would be you two guys going at it. So it'd be Brian would have a permanent friend. Brian would have a permanent friend. That would be cool. Um, maybe I'll go role play on that crazy server and try to get some more out of it. Um, but yeah, go go into that with him. We have. Um, that ahead. would be great if just all this build up. If like bad luck, Brian has a friend and he, and he goes and then Tech is like, "What the fuck is this?" It just shoots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got You got to bring him in as like a cousin or something. You got to. Otherwise, you're right. He might just shoot me. Oh God! Ugh. All that build up, all that build up, and and Brian <laughs> is dead. Is dead. All right, re-roll a new character. Uh, let's see what else has happened. I beat Outward. It was really anticlimactic. Really? Yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's of course there's three endings and there's a couple alternate endings. Um, so the ending I got was uh, the heroic city of Levant, and you go and and you, you stop the war and and there's a big meeting and the scourge is attacking and you defend the city for a little bit. And then they're like, Hey, good job. You should, you should go enjoy your peace now. And then there's, there's no credits. There's just no more missions. And it's just, just over. Um, I guess there's one quest that finishes off with, um, you can take a lot of power, uh, mm-hmm. like a, for a huge sacrifice. And what it is, you get this disease. Um, the power is something like triple your damage um attack speed all this other thing makes you makes you really strong but slowly your health deteriorates until you have like 10 percent of your max health left and you, you can't cure this disease it doesn't go away and if you die you you just go to heaven and then that's it you're done interesting and suddenly it's just you and a lot and you're like well hey you did good job <laughs> you're dead now <laughs> it's just like the last three hours of life <laughs> Um, Tech plays Brian's older brother. He's a bully and the only person who actually understands the criminal underworld. He's also a furry for some reason. There tech you go. Four, embrace it. You're tech here. four. It's tech furry. I'm I'm screen capping this and sending it to Tech. Um, because this this could happen. Tech four. Tech four. 
viewer suggestion for your GTA RP. All right. So today we are we're doing, it's, some, oh, it's, we're doing something. Okay. We're doing something. I have, I have, I, good. No, I didn't know if you you was like we are, and then you were leading into me. We <laughs> and then are. Like, we are. Uh, oh man. You, there, there's Casey's college and my middle school days coming back to us. Neither one of us are youth anymore of any nation. <laughs> nope. Nope. Um, but yeah, so today, the title of today's episode, as everybody can uh, tell from the screen, is The World is Alive. Ooh. Um, and so one of the things that really is impossible to do, in this, my personal opinion, um, as a DM is, is to run all of this background stuff. It's simply impossible to keep the world alive with the characters in it. And sort of what I mean by that is, you know, one of the things that I, uh, I hope to be, you know, an interesting sort of selling point to this campaign is the players are in a world. They aren't the world. So a NPC doesn't stand at the front of a cave. Um, oh, he's getting his pen and everything. I see. I see what's going on now. Uh, it doesn't stand in front of a cave and then the, the heroes show up and he's like, hi, here's my mission. Bye now. And then like after he, after you guys complete the quest, he's like, I've got to stand in the same exact spot because that there's no other point for me. I mean, I know you're, also, giving, you're just giving an example to, to express your point, but right. I that's a video game thing. Right. But also like, there, there's you, you are correct, and and it's um, I'm dying in the middle of nowhere because we forgot yes, food supplies. That is part and of and that and that that's a very good point, game jockey. That I I will bring up um, um, in a second. But yeah, so it's you know, and of course, there's to to give people sort of meaning and like a, a story of their own in a very minimal sense, like. One of the examples, let's say, you know, um, if we talk about someone in Jelly Koi, right? This is a small town. You know, the farmer in Jelly Koi is going to get up every day, um, work his farm, and go to sleep, right? Like, there's, he's not going to have this exciting, adventurous life where he goes also on a traveling adventure as well as every other NPC in the entire game. But, you know, having things like for, you know, um, in in the world where, um, you know, between sessions where Casey and I are, are discussing things, you know, potentially an interaction can happen between, you know, um, a, a character and the party, like for whatever reason, um, the, uh, just like as an example, the party gives um, this NPC a magical weapon and then the, um, uh, the, um, uh, what are in those in those guys are all of a sudden start chasing this person and, and then she runs back up to the party because she's been chased to her home and she can't um, go there alone. So like the party has to, you know, choose to like take her in or like get rid of the bandits or take the weapon back from her. Just, you know, a very basic example, but just to sort of uh, keep, you know, the interactions between PCs meaningful. I have no idea what Casey is trying. Um, it's not the worst thing you could probably. Th it's just bread. It's just bread. bread. <laughs> bread. Um, I should. I should have known. Casey's such a, a good artist. I, I. I feel ashamed that I wouldn't be able to figure that out. Um, you just, but you just focus on. You just focus on your spreadsheets. I'm paying attention. That, that's that's the biggest lie I've ever heard. Um, but to get the game jockey jockey's point. Oh, is this where the party will die in the middle of nowhere because we forgot food supplies? Yes. The the thing <laughs> the when it when it comes to the the little comment that I have right at the top of the screen is the thing to remember about the mechan or the mechanics um, is that they need to be fun themselves or lead to fun intriguing situations. And see, this right? is a self moderating thing. This isn't something to convince the players that we have the answers and trust us. Is that as we're doing this, we need to be paying attention enough to know. 
um, mm-hmm. if the players are having fun, if these mechanics are tiresome, um, right. that they add meaning and enjoyment to the world. Because the second that they don't, we have problems. Right. And so, uh, and also tech is saying that you're quieter than me, but that I'm just a loud person. No, I've, um, I've adjusted some of the settings and the microphone's away from my mouth. So hot. Can fix that wall so, so hot. Um, there we go. But Thank you. one, one, like, and I, I think the biggest point to the, or, or I, one of the biggest subjects to this, where in, you know, campaign, um, you know, it may be, you know, thought as of an annoyance, but in this, um, in this world, if done the right way, could lead to, you know interesting situations that the party will then have to make a choice that in no other campaign they've ever had to make before. Such um, as? Such as, um, and of course, it's not the first thing I've listed, but the second, spell components. Because in this world, you know, there's arcane magic is looked down upon in, in, in a lot of the world. And so when it comes to, you know, these spell components that people would need a lot of, you know, every campaign that I played in, you always just had them unless they cost some sort of, um, So you are, um, you are talking a rule mechanic right now that you are, you are, mm-hmm. you are potentially changing, which, uh, may or may not greatly nerf, uh, in some ways. And so, and, and so that's why this is what I have. I, I didn't go out and create, you know, like a, a 30 page word document okay. on exactly how this works. Because this is where, you know, Casey being a DM longer than I've been alive, you know, is. (laughs) You're not that yet. (laughs) Um, But um, where it, it, if done correctly, it could lead to fun and intriguing situations in the world, right? Where, you know, yes, and it does have the, you know, the thought of, the ability or, you know, the potential to completely, let's say, you know, nerf a sorcerer um, where they aren't able to get their supplies. But in a world, in this world, if they're able to gather their supplies at, you know, they walk right into um, uh, Loros's main city and go, please give me all of this illegal stuff right now for free. You know, I, I feel like that clashes a little bit with the story. Whereas, so if we can, you know, potentially uh, do uh, monitor these things and, you know, do them in a fun way that, you know, it it could lead to a different experience that sort of, you know, deepens the world. Okay. Okay. The balance, (laughs) the balance for that is always um, nothing that is specifically... um, mechanically and technically um, uh, specified in the rules. An example would be mini spell components are easy to come across. They're things like spider webs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a, a piece of wood and a twig. Acquiring those things, the things that don't have a monetary value should always be easy. Um, if we mm-hmm. start putting large storyline consequences into the basic spell components of easy to cast spells. Um, we're adding an additional layer on top of the story, like illegal layer. That's just going to make it not fun. Um, but things like pearl, you know, pearls of certain value. Uh, it would be, uh, if an adventuring party, because we probably do stand out anyway, is seen purchasing things that are often used as only arcane, or usually spell components, expensive stuff, the diamonds, the pearls, um, those objects. I think that definitely draws attention. And in that case, we need to have a list of all spell components cast um, for both divine and arcane spells because there will be some crossover too. So unless we're really certain that an object is only used for for arcane spells, we just have to be, we have to do our homework, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right. And so like, and, and, you know, this isn't like a, you know, um, you know, waiting for the the party to like silently, like sneakily do something wrong, and then, boop, got you all of a sudden. You know, uh, 
six of Inlo's finest warriors are here. They're all level 20 and you guys are level three. How do you guys get out of this situation? Um, Poorly. But, <laughs> but also at the same time, you know, to, to, to use the, the game mechanics in a way that, you know, potentially could be an, not necessarily, you know, if, if they're not exactly fun in themselves, you know, they, they lead to something like, oh, crap, I didn't do this one thing. Well, here, here we go down this different road. That isn't necessarily, you know, any less fun than it would be the other way. It's just now, um, you know, a, a different path that maybe I would never find myself on. Sure. Um, you know, finding, you know, potentially, you know, having a sorcerer with a, a certain spell, whereas in every other campaign, it, it would never really make sense for them to have that spell. But um, for some reason, you know, in this campaign, whatever it, it may be, it, it is useful or, you know, just like certain things like that. Now, do we do we need to reinvent the, the rule, um, the DM, you know, rule book or whatever the hell it's called? Um, no. But, you know, we, we could look for some flavor um, and potentially, you know, when it comes down to just giving um, uh, the players a different way to interact with the world in, in ways that they wouldn't be able to interact with um, um, sure. uh, themselves. Make certain things meaningful. Right. Interesting like, engaging. Yeah, and, and like when it comes to, and this is you know, something we'll sort of have to figure out. But when it comes to, like, uh, you know, uh, f like rations, like just s sort of the, the some of the uh, um, uh, added parts where, you know, it is a very big map. Um, so potentially if, you know, it, it, if the crew comes across, you know, they only have, you know, a certain amount of rations, they may have to stop in a town that, um, they would never think to stop in before, um, which would then lead them down potentially another path. All of a sudden, you know, maybe a clue that they're looking for is in that town. Maybe there's, you know, uh, different story arcs that they could look to take or, you know, blow off and continue their main, uh, their main quest. And since they're just, they're characters in the world and the world doesn't revolve around them, you know, let's say if... Um, bandits were going to come and attack the town they decide not to do it you know all of a sudden you know we, we mark somewhere like right and so then you can we keep track of those actions in the calendars just like outward if you don't solve the bandit problem right so for those who aren't familiar with outward and the bandit problem why don't you go into that so um for what casey has told me because casey and i were so good at the game we we defeated it without um, a second thought is that um, there's uh, a mission that you get in your main hometown to deal with some bandits. And after you get the mission, I believe yep. you have tw 20 days, 20 calendar in -game days in game. Yep. Yep. To deal with it. And if not, your town burns down from the bandits because you did not deal with them. Um, so it's, it's just one of those things that sort of, you know, not only through the character's, <laughs> actions but also through their inactions it affects the world so their decisions have weight you know in any direction that they take yes what he said mm -hmm. i and i like it and it's a lot to track and i'm really curious exactly. how this is going to end up you know really getting getting planned out um mm -hmm. i see we have um like in action, it's gonna to have to be one of those things in action because it's always gonna be a pause in the in the gameplay to reference Tom or Tom interjecting something of importance and messages. I think it might be a lot of you typing to me in the Could background. Be. It might be also you know answering questions that are asked. Um, it, it's gonna mm -hmm. be interesting trying to visualize how this works out well. And I I did see your comments, Game Jockey, talking about like levels of exhaustion. Those are great. They're not used nearly enough. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, adder bladder um yeah and the, the, the game with felicity and, and those things um i don't know well what do we have here so 
so far in the game mechanics things is this the list of all the things up front that you want to track um potentially these are all the things that i wanted to at least talk about with casey okay. back when i was had my training um uh last week which is why i was sort of absent um i was doing training and winning prizes because i was so smart nice. um I, I was also, when things didn't pertain to me, since I was the only manager in the room, I was taking notes on things I wanted to, you know, Talk about have it. mental, yeah, that I didn't want to forget. So these are like like some of the game mechanics um, that, you know, sort of just like, um, um, I, I, I wanted to just sort of look at that, you know. Yes, yes, they're annoying, but I don't, I don't want to run away from them just because they're annoying to track. Like, well, okay, they, okay, I see where you're going. Right, like it's you know there there could be things there that you know, and of course this is different with every player group, which is one of the reasons why it's you know even harder to be a DM, where you know that that added challenge, you know, if if. You know, if I'm there to, you know, sort of take everything in and look at everything, you know, I don't, you know, once again, don't wait for the the group to um, to run out of um, rations in the middle of the um, in the middle of, the you know, a trail in the most dangerous territory. You know, if they're like, OK, we're going to go leave this town, you know, it'd be like, you know. As you look into your supplies, you know, you realize that you may not have what you need to do the journey. So you should, you know, maybe talk to some people or or plan a route where you know that you could potentially hunt for food or, or do something mm -hmm. like that. And we might need and, to, yeah, really allow them to look at those maps. Mm -hmm. plan and so I can see it. where would it be just, you know, like point to point and, you know, like, okay, we fast travel here, we go here. And the only thing we ever really money for is magical weapons because that's you know what people e care about e right and and so like who knows where if they like they they spend um you know um you know they give like a good tip at a bar you know um uh somewhere and they they spend that extra money you actually subtract it out of their inventory that bar and go hey uh sasha the barkeep how's it going so great ever since you gave me that tip i was able to add this new addition um to um to the bar and you guys get free room and board because business has been so well and also while we were digging up the ground we found this thing that may be useful to you or just like something like that man you're um, kind <laughs> once again kind. these these are all examples but um but yes, so um, it's not anything like, you know, I, I, I want to, you know, you know, put Iron Man on and crack with a whip. But it's it's something that um, I find interesting and underutilized because it's annoying. But at the same time, I am here to make annoying things less annoying. Sure. And so where we want to be, you know, where we want to make our D&D &D campaign a little bit different you know, maybe this is one of the ways that we do so. And who knows, maybe this is the, some of the stuff that viewers kind of like and sort of are interesting. Be like, shit, they're running out of food. How are they going to deal with this? Well, or, I think that, that's kind of my job really is to pull that back and make it interesting. Um, mm -hmm. But now I've, I've come up with a, a, a realistic Tom homework assignment. I'm going to take okay. a note here. Um, there was this... Tomb of Annihilation Dungeons and Dragons podcast. It was mm -hmm. the first episode I really think you need to listen to because it handles a lot of this exhaustion, traveling, mm -hmm. shitty weather conditions that the whole party was thrown into. Um, and it was done by, um, you know, a really spectacular and entertaining dungeon master. And the way they pull it all together, I think, is exactly what you're talking about. So I'm going to take a note because I need to get that to you. Uh, actually, I'm going to type it okay. in the Discord. They get shit on so hard. Um, that pod podcast of annihilation where they get shit on. Um, I don't know how to spell annihilation. There's an H in there somewhere, but whatever. Uh, that'll be enough for me to remember. Um, yeah, no, you'll have to see that uh, okay. for yourself. 
Uh, and, and that's kind of the away. stuff that you know would you know is always exactly. helpful. No, just just like re resources like that. You know, we don't need to reinvent the wheel, sure, but sure. also you know doing something different is you know it's fun and exciting and potentially a shitty idea, um, but we won't know until we try. So, how are you going to um, handle? What is this? What's your idea for for stock market and trade routes? Uh, Okay, and, and so this is where I, I then just started to find um, sort of things that would be interesting, um, that could take mundane things and give them a little twist, you know, the world um, around them and give it all a little probability. Um, so to talk about that, the, the everything, to make everything, um, I, I think the easiest to keep track of is, um, and I just threw out these numbers here because I, sure. I really didn't know what would be reasonable or realistic, is having some sort of way to keep track of time. And so um, what I did is um, I was just going through um, figuring things out. And the thing that I came out up with was 25 day months, 10 months in a year. Um, 25 and, day months, 10 months in a year. Mm -hmm. okay. And, um, I, and I sort of just like, um, you know, broke it down to five day weeks and did five, five day weeks. Um, and the, this gives us a template to sort of track everything on. Like if something's going to take, you know, uh, three days travel, we can, you know, start to mark, mark it off, keep track of everything here you know, have the seasons, you know, do we, do we need to have all four seasons? No, maybe we just have a cold and a warm, but, you know, sort of change the world as they're traveling through it. Maybe at, at the later half of, of a month near like the full moon, you know, werewolves start to, you know, be more active. So you have to be more on guard and, you know, people in this area know that just things like that. But also you could, um, since we were running, um, uh, uh, in, in Crolone's world, right? The one thing um, besides freedom that sort of separates Crolone from everywhere else in the in the world is just the amount of money that's flowing through. Okay. And so the the first sort of things that I you know would think about um, when I was thinking about money is of course having some sort of bank slash stock market sort of you know. Um, ability. So, you know, one of the things where when it comes down to it is, you know, there's, um, you know, when players start to accumulate a lot of money, you know, one of the things it never really just makes sense to me that, you know, this adventurer that's constantly risking their life has, you know, thousands of thousands of gold pieces that would people would be able to live on for the rest of their lives just hanging on their side as they're trying to slay a Hydra. Like, ah, the outward you, rucksack problem. Is, is, is that like an actual thing? Well, I mean, you got to carry your stuff. You drop your rucksack. It, it's usually implied. Oh, oh I see. Okay. Bag. I, I, I thought, I thought that uh, it was, <laughs> it was, um, that was like an actual thing, but you were talking about the game outward. I see. Um, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But, um, and then, so, just having uh, a way to um, store your money, right? And, and so if, depending on how seriously, you know, we look into taking encumbrance, that was sort of my first thought of it, is like, um, I was going with Crolome, there being big, powerful families in Crolome. And this is sort of, I was just in my hotel room late at night, and this is sort of what I was thinking and writing down. Um, so it's very much just a, a skin layer deep idea. Um, there's really no thought behind it. But essentially you have five major families in Krolom's territory that all have big business in some way. Maybe one of them it is very agriculturally focused, one's very trade focused. You know, you have sort of like, you know, maybe two of the families run, run competing banks or, you know, in, in some form of fashion, but these five families are the ones that are known for having money. Like okay. even over the rich in, uh, in Krolom's area, these guys are the, the, the cream of the crop. And so with that, 
having um, uh, uh, some sort of way to um, interchange what happens to them into a, a story that isn't necessarily completely predictable, even, you know, um, f- from our standpoint, but having some sort of random shakeability to the campaign that could make interesting things happen with us on our feet. Um, where like, let's say, you know, uh, one of the scenarios I was thinking of is um, the, you know, a couple of the families start to not like one of the families and then they, they kill off like the head of, uh, of one of the companies and then things start to throw in the shambles and the stock market goes crazy. And just like storylines like that, that could maybe happen in the background, but have um, out le- or outreaching impact since it is such the main hub of, let's say, you know, they're in Jelly Koi right. and they usually always import, you know, uh, import their pumpernickel bread sure. um, from this one place. But that one place uh, depended on one of the family's traders to always get there. And then they're assassinated. Their company sort of on the wayside. So um, they don't really know what's going on, what's to do, what's happening. So then it sort of ripples out through the world. Um, and when it comes to talking about the actual calculations of the stock market, you know, having like a little bit of fun with these back systems. Pumpernicker callback. Uh, yeah. The, um, the, um, <laughs> I mean, uh, it is the opening, it is the opening story tech is, is, yeah, it, it is. Pumpernickel. Um, but just having some, you know, some dice rolling in the back. So having like a percentage that the, the money put into the stock market could either, increase or decrease now we don't need to keep track of the market cap and you know annual maybe, earnings call maybe you do quarter. maybe you right. do maybe you're holding <laughs> stockholder meetings and rolling dice and <laughs> um but That's just you thing. know right and, and just something to sort of just keep track of uh of statistics in the background where if players want to jump in they can definitely jump and, in but also not make them complicated enough where if they they need you know if they're not doing anything, you know, they're not doing anything, or they could lead to interesting stories. I want to pause long enough to, mm-hmm. to, to read this comment. Tom is the only dude that designs a fantasy world around a stock market. And, and you're not wrong, because when Tom first proposed this idea, um, when, he, when he first proposed this idea to have a, I just noticed you can't see all my art, because it's hidden by my picture. There you go. That's a trade route on the bottom left. No. Of the coin. Um, when Tom proposed this idea, it was that he wanted to keep track of all the happenings in a world. I the the, whole, the, the big the big selling point here is I'm going to do my normal D and D thing, and everything mm-hmm. Tom wants to keep track of, and everything Tom feels is important in the background of a story that helped the, the world feel more alive. He's going to have a spreadsheet. He's probably a Google sheet that I can reference. I hope because otherwise, mm-hmm. you know, Excel back and forth, it's tough. Right. But I'll, I'll have his notes up. I'll have his his whispers up. I'll have the game up. And, and sort of what we're doing now with these Google Hangout D&D sessions is kind of getting used to, well, I'm getting more time DMing is always, is always a plus, but um, doing it digitally, putting it up on a stream, what elements do I show? Because uh, I noticed last time we played this game, I had a lot of like background noise coming up on the stream, D- DM only stuff that I could probably do off to the side. Um, but we'll figure all that fantastic stuff out he's copying and pasting that banking agricultural metal smithy shipbuilding and shipping yes he put it in there <clears throat> uh yeah um, shipbuilding's gonna and, be a thing army sizes right. are gonna be a thing um mm-hmm. and it's you know and, and the reason that i went there you know one because wherever i go it's money always seems to be involved but also like if, in if they started an ectoons world have like the um i don't i don't know have like you know true troop recruitment you know the constrip conscription be a, a bigger part of things or, or something of that sort right. um but since um um uh all the elements uh, of, of culture and economy right and you know having politics you know having some sort of senate where you know let's say they get really comfortable with one of the the houses right um 
you know, and they're in power, but all of a sudden, if in the next election, something happens and they sort of fall out of power, the new yep. family doesn't like them as much and boom, another, you know, story hitting them with story that, you know, you know, cause I, I as much as, you know, it, it's not to, to me, even as like the DM, it's nice to, you know, have a whole bunch of things, you know, get smashed together and go, Oh shit. I didn't think that that would be a result, but here's a path we're going down. Um, and we've talked about this at length before, but mm -hmm. the important element here is that we can't sit down here and write hundreds mm -hmm. of hours of content and spreadsheets and then try to force it on the player. Right. Cause that's not fun. All this stuff theoretically is happening in a background that you're unaware of until you interact with an important tidbit. And then you know that it's organic and it, you know, we're not mm -hmm. making it up on the flight has purpose as meaning your actions, the actions of the world around you, you know, matter. Right. Um, so don't worry too much because it is a very big, big trope, a very big, not even a trope, just something dungeon masters, young dungeon masters do pretty readily is they get super excited, much like Tom is now about mm -hmm. their story and, and, and intricacies behind it, the politics, and they want to lore dump you all the time. Um, so hot. I am, I'm going to be your barrier. What, um, what happened? I'm going to Why be your barrier between, okay, uh, you know, you and Tom. Uh, hey, I, I, I think I did a decent job. All right. Oh, about your, your dungeon mastering? Yeah, and by decent, I meant not shit. Um, but... I enjoyed your dungeon mastering. Uh, for um, the first time, you did pretty fantastic. Um, but yeah, and, and the the I, I think this is an interesting way to create elements to a story that are multifaceted and per like like th this stuff is always happening. But like it, we we can draw from like. It's not like the players can go a different way and completely ruin everything. The 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 stuff is all, always there. It just could affect you know where they're going a little bit differently, but it affects you know how we're generating the content off the top of Casey's head. I yeah, I am always prepared to give you two well planned out directions and then a free world. Um, my free world might not be as sexy. Uh, but mm -hmm. that might be the sexiest part about it. Cause sometimes you just need that. You just need that basic bitch. Sometimes you just throw down, throw down that 50 cent piece, whatever that means, whatever I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't um, know what you're saying what, no, you it's never do that. Either. No game jockey. You don't. I think, I don't think you do. And I think you put more work into the DMing than any of us, but you do not, you do not lore dump on us. You absolutely do not. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. You have on here yes. NPC relationships. So are you going to be keeping track of NPC relationships for NPCs we haven't met? Only important um, ones? Uh, how are we doing this? That That's that's a good question. Um, prob probably not by name. Potentially um, having not, not necessarily job titles either. Um, but like having like let, let's say like you know when it comes to like the war fronts and i, I and the other thing like when it comes to this stuff i don't want to just like it have it be me making this stuff up i want it there to be some form of dice rolling that is occurring that is sort of generating the story behind us in true DD fashion i bet there's um, some source books out there we can grab i know that the salt marsh one coming out has some ship stuff in it that i'm gonna grab okay awesome whereas like when it comes to like that combat let's say you know I'm like okay um ectune has a thousand troops here uh loros has an army of 200 you know i roll the dice in whatever way and then somehow loros's army wins plant a flag in that sure and so so we don't have general titus montgomery of the haberdashery battalion don't be you know don't we be shit on a haberdashery battalion <laughs> we just have a mark of okay this is an interesting history um and all of a sudden the crew is in a point where casey needs to grab it boom 
Titus Montgomery of the Habitashery household now has a place in the story. And this is sort of, you know, you know, the Habitashery. Right, where where he comes from, you know, what has happened, like giving I'll have good the character. background. It'll be a mix of your plan stuff and my ability to, to improv when we need to. Right. And you kind of see how I plan out. We've taken a look at how I plan out the storyline elements that I can't quite bring up now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, there's there's definitely room for that. Right. And then let's say, you know, also just sticking with the war fronts, because that's like the, the sort of the last... Um, point that uh, of what I was sort of coming up with is let's say all of a sudden Moros jumps on a point that cuts off a trade route between Krolome and Actun, you know. Boom, there's another story point where maybe all of a sudden the tide starts to turn in the war and then Actun goes to drastic action. No, and, not drastic action, Tom. And, and then launches, you know, I don't know, like a Gundam army a gundam on a, a gundam i i said gundam like uh the Star korean Wars. oh gangam <laughs> yeah yeah that's it, it got it got tied up in there but i meant no, you're gundam. fine you're fine you got you got some words you're trying to get out you know trying to understand the use of language mm-hmm. in pop culture it's mm-hmm. it's tough <laughs> um but yeah um but once again you know not all of it um um not all you of know, it sounds as boring as it might sound. Uh, yes, because I get to do the fun stuff to me, and Casey gets to do the fun stuff for him. It's true, potentially. Um, but um, but yeah. So uh, you know, coming up with uh, oh, I did it. I didn't. Um, um, hold on, hold on. Oh no, it created a thing. Okay, here. Th- these these I'm, are. The I'm techno- hitting undo. I don't know if it's undoing your stuff or just mine. No. No, I um. So I created the ten months, and it's essentially just taking points and how they make shapes and sticking em at the end of them. the the two The two things that I found that create a little bit of a problem is um. So you have pointum, which is is just a single point. You have linum, trium, quadum. You get to septum, and it's which, septum. It's septum. So I was thinking. You know how there's always like the one weird thing where like since you know that's kind of like seven tenths out of the year, so like that's you know what everyone calls you know like the harvest or something, and that's like where yeah, a big just festival keep septum, takes us. keep your joke um, in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and so then uh, just having you know sort of a timeline of how everything's going, um, I, I think this would be a, a great um, like this one of the places where I'm taking a big chunk of notes is having like almost like a, a day planner calendar and where things are happening, you know, just write, okay, the players interacted with this, you know, did this, did this, did this. And then from day to day to day, you know, through these three days, they were traveling to this and then sort of, um, uh, figuring out the background throughout, you know, I'm going to suggest we, we take a page at it. I, I feel like we, no, I guess your calendar's fine. I don't want to directly copy Faerun's stuff. I don't like having five weeks, so that's a lot. Why don't you? I would like, if we're going to do four four or less weeks in a month. Okay, so so then we could just do four four weeks, so then it's 20 days, so then we just do 200 days, 200 uh, days in a year. I still think that's so fine. Like a shorter rotation, okay. Uh, ideally, the, the, less, the less they have to keep track of, like for example, if there were only four months a year and they lined up with the seasons, mm-hmm. that why the fuck not? You know, um, as True. an as an idea. Um, yeah. Well, why not the... four thirty day months that turn into a year? Um, mm-hmm. That would be simple and easy to follow. Right now we have like ten months, so like where do the seasons fall? Two and a half months in, halfway through Trium. Right, um, right. and I was thinking more of just like two months. Smaller um, world, faster rotation. Look at that game, Jackie. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. But yeah, and it's one of those. And once again, these are just like thin deep. I, I was just sure. we changed the whole down. continent structure. We could do this, right? Yeah, you know, it's. Um, and that's another thing that I want to try to get going on is like just you know once again is throwing all the cities on the map, and once again you know this is not all of the cities on the map. But I, I, we have it somewhere where it's like um, the the city that has 
Um, it could even be like potentially some, uh, except we do have Gilliqui on the map, but you know, you're, you're in your bar and you know, the mine in like 10 houses that, you know, there's no reason that any map would contain that town. So right. there's always room for, you know, um, um, Maybe. expansion. So. There's always room to get better. We are the get better people. We get better at things. Uh, I think this is a flaming sword we're going for here, guys. Flaming sword. Yeah, let's go start with yellow. I just, I, I would, I, I would love to see when you know Game Jockey, since he's our most dedicated fan, puts all together like the best moments, and there's just a timeline of like these screens that goes bam, 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 and it's just like they get more and more filled with pictures. Um, I like to think that um, this is a much more happy stream to look at with so much going on. I really do. I think at the heart of this, just a happy little orange. <laughs> right there, Flaming Sword. If that's not a, a fantastic looking piece of art. I have a style. I don't know if you can see it here. Um, is, it, is it the style second grader? Um, no second grader is this good. Thank you very much. I've seen my daughter's art. If, if I remember correctly, Venus was two size based off my math, which has uh, 240 day years. Okay. Look at that. But yeah, and it, once again, you know, it's what works, you know. I just, I, I think it's be I, something, something to have, you know, a rotation of, you know, something's easier to do here, harder to do at this time of the sure. year. Maybe it will, you know, influence characters to play you have to and those are notes you know. you're got to take when you're when you're developing this calendar and i, I want to take a moment mm -hmm. before we move too far past it game jockey did the math on our world and determined it was the size of venus that that's impressive and it deserves to be noted see and, and, Tom, and, oh, Tom oh, I'm, I'm dedicated i have no idea how to do that wait what i just uh <laughs> But but hey, I I want to say I created and created the calendar. You did magically, and it just happens to line up with Venus, which I think is a Venus. is a, that's that's a bad word. We're Ven gonna. I said Venus. I don't think so. Roll I back. I have a rollback. Um, geez. All right. So anything else we want to talk about? Because I am gonna wrap up this one closer to seven. Um, as close to seven as possible. Um, we have some good stuff here, and well, I think next I, time there, there's got to be a moment in the future where we show off this work. Uh, we'll oh have yeah, to show the behind absolutely. the screen so we know what what to worry about. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Maybe that comes after the the Casey do real life break. Um, yeah, the, the ninety days so, is a good time to yeah. start putting together all our notes in the spare time. Mm -hmm. And I just you know want to make sure that just just because you know something is. is can be deemed to be annoying that it's not overlooked too quickly to make sure we can extract some sort of interesting ability. But if any, uh, if any time uh, any, anything becomes too much, we'll kill it. No, absolutely. Fun right. wins, fun wins. And as long as we, everybody knows like, hey, you know, I know I like what you're doing with this food, but you're being overbearing about it. Let us know. No. That's the idea. And what's even more important is DM funds wins. In players' misery is sometimes DM's fun. That's so. true. Um, <laughs> one, thing to, one, thing to, one thing to think about is I was watching a, a Twitch channel where donations um, and, and bits affected the game world. Mm -hmm. It was all cheesy stuff. I don't necessarily like the flat-out way they did it. They're like, $25, and you can give a player a long rest. I'm like, mm. um. But maybe something. And I want to brainstorm that at another point. Mm -hmm. I do. Um, I don't think we should necessarily... $25 in the st stock market crash. <gasps> we can, oh, man. We the background stuff. But like you can make donations the... to the stock market. What's that? <laughs> and then you can, you can make donations to the stock market and then like have the rolls. All the players are like, oh, no, my shit crashed. <laughs> That would, that would, that. Oh, I, I was talking about have like the actual like um, chat be able to play in the stock market and then like start like paying out. Oh, you know, if like, only I knew how to do that. That that is definitely illegal. Well, not real gambling. It'd be like you know some kind of like Casey bits. 
loot chests. Loot, loot chest. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm Uncommon. And I'm still not going to say my name every time we do this.